Hello there. Good day to you. This is a video on Joysticker. It's a Windows based joystick to keyboard mapper that is set up using Lewis scripts. Um, this, I'm doing this on version 1.1. Um, if anybody has used version 1.0, there's a few changes that are for the better, and they may break your scripts. That being said, let's check out where to get it. So, I am here at the Pixel Byte Studios website at pixelbytestudios.com. We simply need to go to the software tab, go to utilities, and click joysticker. And that will tell you about joysticker, what's going on with it. You can create, again, joystick to keyboard mapping files using Lewis scripts. It supports up to 16 joysticks, and it can write out uh, configuration scripts for a particular joystick. I'll show you that later. Works with Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1. Um, click right here to download it. Uh, it's donationware, but I encourage you, please, try it out before donating anything just to make sure it works on your system. Obviously, I appreciate donations. They help encourage me to continue to improve Joysticker, but just make sure that it works on your system before if you decide to do that. Um, here's the version history down here. You can see what's going on, and here's the download button. Um, I've already downloaded it, and it is. I've stuck it on my desktop. It's right here, and I've actually already got it open here. One thing that Joysticker requires, and that is an elevated privilege, the administrator privilege, so that it can send input to any window that you desire. So I'm going to uh, open up a command prompt, and I'm going to open it up with elevated privileges. So excuse me while I do that. We'll drag it over here so you can see it. And we will now change the directory to our desktop. And whoa, whoa, whoa. got to change it to me first, and then desktop, and we'll change it to the joysticker directory. Now we're here, and we can run joysticker scripts. Let me uh, do something real quick. I'm going to unplug all my joysticks, and I'm just going to show you what goes on whenever you uh, just run it without any arguments. It says, hey, here's the usage. It gives you the version. What it wants is a Lua config script. Let's just take a look at a Lua config config script real quick, shall we? Let's look in the script. And by the way, this is what you'll see when you unzip it. This is the structure. In the docs, you'll see all the readme files, the setup, all the stuff. And this is a useful a file, by the way. It gives you the key mappings. So whenever you're set up, you're setting up your key mappings, you can say keys.return, keys.enter, instead of having to set up these really weird uh, not weird, but these hexadecimal codes and whatnot. Also, there is a README file that sort of ex that does not sort of. It explains um, it explains the uh, different additional uh, functions that you can call from your mapping script. These are important, as you'll see later, and this is where you can find them. And also, uh, well, I'll, we'll get we'll get back to that. Let's check out a script real quick. So I'm going to go in the scripts examples directory, and we're going to get this simple arrow keys underscore zx. So all this does it maps the directions of the joist of the analog stick to the arrow keys, and it maps uh, a couple of buttons on the joystick to keys z and x. Um, really simple. You create a variable. I'm calling it mappings here. It's a local variable and uh, it can be whatever you want. It doesn't matter the name. And then you give it this keyword map and you open brackets and of course all the way over here you have to close brackets but in between these brackets you define um, basically this is the input event type or this is the event type on the joystick. Those can be found on the readme. They are all right here and the explanation is all right here. Um, and I believe, actually, that these are no longer, I don't think I do these anymore. I'm just doing digital pad up, digital pad right, down and left for the digital pad. And then for the analog stick, I've got up, down, left, and right. And these are the buttons, B0 through B31. 
So those are the events that you'll see come through, and those are the ones you can map to keys. So here I'm saying map the, whenever the user presses up on the analog stick, map it to the up arrow. When the user presses down, map it to the down arrow. Um, and let me go over here to the buttons real quick. So when B0 is pressed on the joystick, map it to the Z key. And this B, these, these buttons, it depends on what joystick you have. They're mapped differently. Um, you just have to go in and mess around with it, and you can do that. Let me, let's run this script uh, real quick, if I can find my command prompt. Let's run this script. Uh, we'll go to, what is it, uh, scripts and examples and then arrow keys, okay? Oh yes, and I have no, no joysticks plugged in right now, so let me plug one in. Now I have one plugged in, and it will run and you see that it says it's found one joystick and it's using the default handlers. That's great and it's also of course using the mapping script that we have. So now when I press keys or a, a joystick buttons or I input on the joystick you'll see uh, you you get the the messages. If you see over here on the left that is the actual joystick ID. So if I have more than one joystick plugged in this will be different depending on which joystick is sending the event, or which joystick you're getting this, this uh, data from. So if I press, I can also press any unassigned button and it will show me what the name of that button is. So that particular one I just now pressed is, is not assigned, but that means there's nothing in the script that is assigned that mapped it to a key. And, but, but you can use this and just run a script like this and just press keys and you can figure out which keys which button names they are you know I just pressed another one that one's B4 and this particular button is actually assigned to a key you can see it's key Z and so this little bracket indicates what state that key is in one would be pressed as you can see right here and then if I let go of that button it will say hey you just unpressed you just let it go unpressed it um, this mapping is um, fairly standard for flash games so we can actually come over here uh, got this Ludum Dare entry it's called Titan Souls if you haven't played it it's really fun I'm gonna load that up and you see the arrow it's it tells you what the, the controls are right here um, Z to roll and X to charge the arrow and fire it and X to summon your arrow back to you uh, I've got this running right here it's already mapped I can use the keyboard to control everything if I want to, um, but now I can also grab my joystick and uh, run around and do all the stuff with the joystick now. So that's kind of cool if you want to play flash games with the joysticks. So that's that. Um, got a couple of more scripts I want to show you. Let me just bring this over here since we're going to be using this. Um, let me go ahead and show you the custom handlers. So anytime a button is pressed or unpressed or any input on the joystick changes, uh, Joysticker will send a, a an event. And it has these, if you saw when I ran that the first time, um, it says using default handlers. There are default state key state or key press or, I'm sorry, joystick press handlers um, and that Joysticker has, which most of the time you just want to use those. But if you ever have the need, which it's possible, if you ever have the need to override them, you can do that. All you have to do is implement them. There's one called state change, and you can see this in the readme file. There is a state up and a state change uh, callback, and the state change callback is called anytime uh, a joystick's input changes, whether it changes from a pressed state to an unpressed state. It doesn't matter. It calls the state change every time. State up is only called when a joystick input changes from a pressed, i.e. a 1, to a 0 state, which is unpressed. And that is useful for, uh, well, Joysticker actually uses that for some of the setup stuff. You'll, but anyway, if you want to uh, override that, you can. So this is an example of where I have overridden the default uh, handlers for these both of these functions. And if you look, you see 
I've just added this equal just to prove that now these particular functions are being called instead of the default ones. And then whenever the whatever the particular uh, input or event on the joystick is unpressed, you'll get this up or this off uh, printed. But let me just show you real, talk to you real quick about these functions. The state change function takes a joystick I, or a joystick ID. So what you'll get is the joystick ID of whichever joystick is sending this particular event or has, has changed the type of event that's been sent, which is right here. These are the parameters, the, the up, down, and the, the uh, digital pad events. Um, and then the state of that particular uh, event, be it a 0 or a 1. And same thing for state up. It just doesn't have um, the state because this is obviously only called whenever the state is 0. Let's run this one real quick just so that you can see that, just to prove that those those handlers are being overridden. And I'll press keys and now you can see the equal there and then we've got off. And you see also it doesn't say using default handlers anymore. So that's how you know that you've, you've done that. But that is a, uh, that is something that can be done. We'll, now let's look real quick at, let's look at real quick at the toggle keys, little example script. All this does is it just, uh, there's a, a function called joysticker.toggle keys. You can uh, turn, you can put the different, the three different toggleable keys on the keyboard in uh, either a pressed or an unpressed state. And that's all that really does. And uh, this script basically just turns off, makes sure the num lock is turned off, and then it uh, exits. That's where this joysticker.stop polling does, it just exits the whole thing. So that's what that does if you ever need that. I want to look real quick at map keys, uh, this map key script, and this just kind of shows you how to set up a, uh, this basically will write out a script for you, which is pretty cool. Um, if you have, like we were looking at the buttons on the joystick, or if it's a different joystick and you don't know which buttons they are, basically this lets you say, um, I know I want a Z key and I, I need I want to press be able to press the Z key with some button or something on the joystick. I want to be able to press the X key and I want it to be I want to call it the jump key and I want to call the Z key, let's call it the fire button. And you know, on and on. You see I've got these other ones up left, right, down. Now if I know some of the mappings that I want, I can go ahead and stick them in this mappings um, assignment. But here I'm just setting them all up. So what you do is you have this mappings table, put whatever you want in there if you want anything, but if it's, you you have to have a mappings table, so I have an empty one here, and then I just add that empty mappings table to, we'll use enjoysticker.add mappings, and then I, I want to, I'm going to tell it I want to do a setup keys, um, and then I give it my setup table, and then I give it the name and the, basically the output file that I want uh, when this setup has completed. And at this point, you'll want to have just one joystick plugged in for this, uh, for now. So I only have one plugged in. But well, let's just run that. I'll just kind of show you what it does. I think maybe you, you kind of get the gist. But So now it says, press and release the control for the fire button. So now I can choose any key that I want on my joystick for the fire button. And that will be mapped. If you look up here, that will be mapped to the Z key, whatever I press. So I'm going to press what I want for the fire button. Now it's asking me, Press the control for the for where wait for right when I want to go right. Okay, now jump. Let's press jump left. We'll go up, and now for down. I'm going to just do this real quick. I'm going to press one of the keys that has already been assigned, and it will say, "Hey, that's already been mapped." So it doesn't let you do two keys to one uh, one map or two joystick inputs to one key. So it's kind of it's just sort of a a, a precaution or whatever you want to say. So now it has written out a file that we said to write out. And let me just pull that up. And uh, actually, you don't need that. All you need is what you see here. So you've got, it gives you a mappings table, and then it adds that mapping to the joysticker thing. So you could run this, and you would, your joystick would be mapped to the keys that you had set up through map keys. 
So that can come in handy, especially if you have a bunch of different joysticks or whatever. Also, um, I got a couple of other in the mappings um, directory that I have set up. Um, if you haven't played Brothers, by the way, Brothers is a really fun game. It's really good. Um, so are all these. These other ones are pretty cool, too. Um, Spelunky was one of the ones that I was um, played with played with some people. I played them with my kids, actually. And it was kind of crummy to have to crowd the keyboard to play it. And so that's kind of one of the reasons why Joysticker was born, <laughs> was to be able to play this game without having to... with joysticks, because Spelunky supports, from what I understand, it supports Xbox 360 joystick, but it doesn't support other joysticks. Well, with with uh, Joysticker, it will support any because basically you're mapping to keys. So I have I have a uh, I have a script for that. I'll just show you real quick. Let's run the Spelunky script. Okay, so uh, let me open it up real quick because this is one that does multiple joysticks. It supports multiple. So I've got the first mapping. And if you notice now for these mappings, I'm having I've got a mapping name for the a name for this mapping, and I'll show you that in a second why, what that why that's important. But see, I've named it player one and a player two mapping. Um, right now, I only have one joystick plugged in, so it's just like okay, I'm using the default handlers. So let me come over here and we'll grab my joystick, and you can see I can jump and I can uh, I can run fast. I can do all the good stuff that you want to do with Spelunky. So Spelunky works as well as pretty much anything else that you want to do. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and exit this game and I want to show you I'm going to plug in one more joystick and show you what happens when you have multiple joysticks plugged in, especially when you have multiple mappings in a script like we do here. And show you what those map uh, the the mapping names are for. So now I've got two joysticks and now it's asking me, "Hey, which joystick do you want?" to use the player one mapping. So now you see what's going on. So I just press a button on that joystick and then it says which joystick do you want to use for the player two mapping. Press the button on that joystick. So now they're set up. So that's how that works. Um, yeah, pretty much um, here's another one for a different game. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Any of the other functions uh, that joystick supports you can see them in here and they pretty much we've pretty much gone over all these um, but give it a give it a run and see what you think and I hope that it helps